All right, so I'm going to do this as one uh, video. Might be long, but then you can always stop it and start it again. So uh, we need to pick up uh, at the end of our advanced topics and research methods uh, video lecture, uh, where we are talking about the study done with the uh, uh, you know uh, you know preschoolers, the five-year-olds, and violent uh, cartoons and their aggression on the playground. And let's go back and take a look or review this. Uh, the experiment uh, we had uh, in the experimental condition, violent cartoons. In the control condition, nonviolent cartoons. Uh, the dependent variable was the number of aggressive acts. But then there was a uh, extraneous variable uh, confounded in the experiment, and that was time of day. And I discussed how there could have been some uh, you know, reasons why the time of day could have affected the dependent variable. For example, uh, in the morning the kids are sleepy and not that active and so they're going to be less aggressive. Uh, or in the afternoon the kids are hyper, they had some sugar for lunch, and they're, they're hyper and they're going to be more aggressive. So just to, to review that uh, before we go on, so you have that idea in the in your mind of this simple experiment of an experimental and a control condition. And just to review again, as I said, there are possible uh, you know effects of confounds or extrane confounded extraneous variables uh, between the morning and the afternoon. And so. What, there's different ways of dealing with that confound and dealing with that uh, extraneous variable, but I want to talk about uh, one specific way to, to you know, be an introduction to this idea of factorial designs. So our old research question uh, from the original study that we did was, is there an effect of cartoon violence on aggression in children? And now what I'd like to propose is we can look at that and also look at two new research questions uh, by doing what's called a factorial design or a factorial experiment. Uh, the new questions are going to be, is there a time of day effect on aggression in children? Uh, we suppose there might be. Uh, and what about the effects of cartoon violence and time of day uh, working together? And so what we would do then is create an experiment that looks like this instead of just two conditions, that is a control cartoon condition and a violent condition, we create four conditions. One in which subjects get the uh, control cartoon in the morning, one in which they get the control cartoon in the afternoon, one, a third one where they get the violent cartoons in the morning, and a fourth one when they get the violent cartoons in the afternoon. And by creating this design where we have these four different conditions, we are able to answer all of these research questions. We can ask ourselves, is there an effect of cartoon violence on aggression in children regardless of the time of day? We can answer that question. Uh, we can also ask ourselves, is there a time of day effect on aggression in children? regardless of what type of cartoons they've just watched. And then finally we can ask ourselves the question, what about the effects of cartoon violence and time of day on aggression and children working together? We can answer all three of those questions. So this factorial design that I'm talking about allows us uh, to answer several different research questions uh, you know, more than just doing a couple different simple experiments as we had been doing. So in order to understand what these factorial experiments are, or what these ex uh, factorial experiments are, we're going to have to learn some new terminology, that's all, but then we're also going to have to learn a new concept, which is the idea of the interaction. So let's first take a look <coughs> at new terminology. So one thing, let me get a drink, excuse me, one thing that we need to uh, uh, learn is that in a factorial experiment, some of the things that we already know uh, about are going to have different names. Uh, we already know what an independent variable is. Well, 
in uh, factorial design, we are going to call independent variables factors. And so whenever you hear factor, just think about independent variable. And then in uh, an experiment with uh, one independent variable, that independent variable will have different conditions, a control condition or a, a experimental condition, uh, the uh, normal cartoon condition versus the violent cartoon condition. We're not going to call those conditions anymore. We're going to call them levels. And so whenever you hear levels, recognize that we're talking about different uh, conditions of, of an independent variable. But now we're going to be calling them levels. And so in this factorial experiment, and this is the most basic factorial experiment you can create, a, a two by two, and I'll be describing what that means in a second, uh, we have two factors. This is a two-factor experiment. One factor is time of day. The other factor is type of cartoon. And uh, each factor has two levels or two conditions. That is, uh, the type of cartoon, there's either control cartoons or violent cartoons. So there's two conditions or two levels of that factor. And then time of day, there are two levels of that factor, morning and afternoon. So uh, you know, we have a very basic factorial experiment with two independent variables. Uh, and the two independent variables, the two factors, are cartoons and time of day, and they both have two factors. Uh, let's take a look at an, an example, an experimental example, and you may want to get this from the library and take a look at it. Uh, Simpson and Wooler, uh, altruism and indirect reciprocity, the interaction of person and situation in pro-social behavior. A very interesting uh, social psychological study. What researchers did is they used a personality test to identify people as either egoists, that is people who are more concerned about maximizing their own outcomes, or altruists, people who are more concerned about helping other people. And then they had all these subjects, either egoists or altruists, uh, play a game with a partner in the laboratory. And after the game was over, they gave the participants $8. And they said, OK, divide this $8 between yourself and your partner uh, based on how well you played the game. And it, the idea was it was to reward them for how well they played. And then they placed the subjects into two conditions. Uh, and in one condition, the par participant had to publicly, in front of the partner, or privately, in a room by themselves, decide how to divide the $8 between themselves and their partners. OK, so a first little quiz here. Identify the dependent variable. That is, what is being, uh, what behavior of the participant is being observed not being manipulated by the researcher, but being observed. If you identify the DV first, that should help. And now this is a factorial experiment. So there are two factors or two independent variables. Identify uh, both factors and identify the levels of each one of those factors. So you may want to stop uh, the video right now to answer these questions. And you may want to go back and, and uh, replay the uh, uh, description I just gave you. Okay, so the dependent variable, the only thing that they're measuring from the participant in terms of the participant's behavior is how they divided the eight dollars between themselves and their partner. So that is the dependent variable. Now with that out of the mix, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to identify the factors. One factor that is, again, by identifying factors or independent variables, we're going to be looking for groups or conditions. And if you go back to the example, you'll see I use group and condition only in very specific situations. One set of groups that were created was egoists versus altruists, that is the uh, participant's personality type. And then the other conditions that were created was the decision condition, that is, whether or not it was public or private. So the two factors are personality type, and uh, the levels of that are egoist or altruist. And then 
The uh, other factor is decision condition, and the levels of that are public versus private. And now that we have uh, an example of the factorial experiment, we can talk about factorial notation. Sometimes we want to be able to uh, write down one of these factorial experiments very quickly, so we use this notation. Uh, the experiment I just described would be a 2 by 2 factorial design. And so we'd write it this way, 2, uh, and that number indicates the number of levels of the first factor. And then we would uh, give the name of the first factor, which is personality. And then we would give the levels of the first factor, which is egoist and altruist. And there is one, two, and yep, there are two uh, levels in this first factor. By, or that's a big X and it's read as by. And then two, the number of levels of the second Oh, that should say second factor. There we go. And that's decision condition. And then we have uh, the name of it and the name of the levels. And there are two levels and one, two. And so that is how you identify and fill in factorial notation. Each factor, each independent variable, gets a little introduction here. And the number indicates the number of levels. Here we have two levels. Uh, then we go on by, and then the next uh, factor has two levels again. Oh, by the way, what's 2 times 2? That's 4. Oh, I'm sorry, I went the wrong way. And there are four conditions in this experiment. That's uh, how you can figure out the number of conditions in an experiment from the factorial notation. And in fact, that is not just a by, but that is a multiply sign. And this is getting at the basic uh, uh, statistics of the methods that uh, are used to analyze this data. But that's a, a little bit beyond what we're talking about here. But that's an interesting bit of trivia. OK, so what is the factorial notation of this study? And so stop your uh, video player and write down the factorial notation. And then start it up again to see if you got it right. And it is, of course, a 2 type of cartoon, control slash violent, by 2 time of day, morning slash afternoon. Okay, so let's uh, see how well you can do. Uh, in a study of reading comprehension, 6th grade students read a short story about baseball. The students are divided into three groups based on their knowledge of baseball. High knowledge of baseball, low knowledge of baseball, or from a culture without baseball. Within each group, half of the students are high scorers on a test of verbal IQ, while the remaining students are low scorers. And so, what is the factorial notation of this study? And as a bonus, identify the dependent variable. So you may want to stop the video and try to identify the factorial notation and the dependent variable, and then restart and see if you're right. OK, so uh, one thing you could do is start with the dependent variable. Uh, what is the one thing that we are saying that we're measuring? Well, we don't say it outright, but we're saying that in a study of reading comprehension. So we're measuring how well they comprehend something. That usually involves we're measuring uh, how well they uh, you know, comprehend something they read. So that is the measure we're getting from the subjects. This is actually a three by two design. There are three levels of uh, baseball knowledge, high, low, and no, cult no baseball in their culture and then two levels of verbal IQ, high versus low. And so this is a three by two design, and there would be three times two is six. There would be six conditions or six cells in that design. All right, so now uh, we need to talk about 
the third question that we can ask ourselves, what about the effects of cartoon violence and time of day on aggression in children? Yes, we can ask that question and answer it in a factorial design. And this involves talking about the interaction. So let's go back to uh, Simpson and Willer. It's a two by two. Uh, you get $8 to share with your partner. How much should you share? Well, uh, personality may affect how much you share. And, uh, you know, having the decision being made in private or public may affect how much you share. But then what about will the four unique combinations of personality and condition affect uh, how much you share differently? That is, each unique condition, would they affect how you share differently? And so in this, what we're talking about is uh, we want to know, and we can, and we will be able to find it, do altruists versus egoists, do they uh, share that $8 differently? Uh, if you're making the decision in public versus in private, will that affect uh, how much money you share? But then these four conditions are unique combinations of personality and the type of decision. Will those differently determine how you share that money? Well, let's take a look at the results of Simpson and Wheeler's study. And, you know, what's the easiest way to think about sharing this money? Uh, you say, well, it's $8 to share among two people. You just basically divide $8 between two people, and that's $4. And that's what we have right here, $4. And we see that uh, in altruists, in public, will actually share a little bit more than $4. Uh, egoists in public will share about $3.60. But then look what happens when it's done in private. Uh, both the ego altruists and the egoists share less money in private, you know, because they're, they're, it's in private so they can be selfish and not be ashamed. But again, there's only like maybe a uh, 80 cents difference here there's over a dollar difference or a two almost two dollars difference here so something about doing this in private is increasing the spread between altruists and egoists and the fact that we're seeing this increased spread that's what i mean by would the unique combinations of these two factors cause people to behave differently. But I'm going to put that off until a minute or so. Let's take a look at the results in a different way. This is just a chart of the results. These are the means, and if we go back, I said like uh, the, uh, you know, altruists in public, uh, you know, they gave their partners a little bit more than four bucks. It was four dollars and twelve cents. Uh, in private, they gave their uh, partners uh, $3.24. The ego egoists in public gave their partners $3.66, and in private, uh, $1.72. One thing we can do is that we could find the mean of these rows and these columns. And we call these means the marginal means because we put them in the margins of the table. And one of the things that we can do first is we can look at here with altruists, and let me draw a little bit. With altruists, what we do is we look at altruists, and there are some altruists making public decisions, some making private decisions. Let's just average those together. And so all altruists, on average, give $3.68. Now let's look at these. These are egoists. And in public, they give this much. In private, they give that much. But let's average them all together. And overall, they give this much. And what we've done here by averaging together the different conditions 
that the altruists versus the egoists are in, we have a measure of how altruists behave regardless of the condition and how egoists behave regardless of the condition. And so remember we were talking about doing an experiment where we look to see whether or not altruists versus egoists uh, are going to share more money. Well, here by just averaging, we do that experiment and we find that uh, altruists give almost a dollar more than egoists, regardless of what condition they're in. And then we can do the same thing here. We can look at these marginal means. In public, people in general, regardless of if they're altruists or egoists, give $3.89 to their partners. And in private, regardless of if they're egoists or altruists, they give $2.48. And so what that means here is that overall, whether or not you're making the decision in public or private, there is a difference of about uh, 75 cents or so uh, of, that's not even close, Bill, uh, you, know, uh, you know, there is a difference, yeah, 75 cents or so, there is a difference uh, between people making the decision in private and in public. What I was just talking about was called the main effects. The main effects are the effects of one factor on the dependent variable regardless of the other factor. And so in this uh, two-factor experiment, we can talk about two main effects. The main effect of personality is the effect of personality on the DV, how much money you give your partner, found by comparing the marginal means for uh, altruists and egoists. And since we've basically averaged together the type of situation, that is regardless of the type of situation. The main effect for condition is the effect of the condition uh, caused by comparing the marginal means for private versus public decisions after we've averaged across the type of personality. And those are the things I just showed you. And so if we go back here, we see that in this factorial experiment, there is a main effect because there is a difference between these means for uh, type of decision or condition, uh, decision condition, and there's also a main effect for personality type. And that's because there's a difference between these marginal means. And so going back to what I was saying before about an experiment, a you know, simple experiment, we get those two simple experiments back out of the factorial design. And then we ask ourselves, well, what about the effect of personality and condition together? And that is technically known as the interaction effect. And the interaction effect is the effect of one IV on the dependent variable. And this effect changes in strength or direction from one level of the other IV to the other. And that's the definition of the interaction. And let's basically put that into the terminology of our experiment here. It's the effect of the interaction is the effect of uh, personality, that is independent variable one, on money shared, which is the DV. And that effect changes from one level of the condition of IV2, that is, uh, you know, uh, you know, condition to the other level of condition. And indeed, if we go back here, we see that there is a change in the strength of the relationship uh, between public and private as we go from uh, one personality type to another. Both personality types, as you go from public to private, you see a drop in how much money they share but notice that the strength of the drop is greater for egoists than it is for altruists. So it's stronger. 
So there's a change in strength. Weak. That is, the change, the drop is weaker here, but it's stronger here. So that meets the definition that we have of an interaction. It's when there's a change in the strength or the direction from one level of the other IV to the other. And we can put that into you know, words and interpret it. And this is what I mean when I say interpret this. Egoists keep more money for themselves than altruists in the public level of condition, but egoists keep a lot of money for themselves than altruists in the private condition. And the fact is that egoists are doing something special in the private level of uh, you know, condition uh, specifically, that means that there's a unique relationship between uh, your know, condition and personality as it's affecting the dependent variable. And that's an interaction. And again, we can see, as I said before, that the strength, because it's dropping faster here, the strength changes from one level of uh, you know, personality to the other level of personality. Okay, so a final set of new terms, the interaction effect, whether or not there's an effect of the interaction or not. Uh, how do you go about finding it? The easiest answer for that is basically graph the interaction like I did and look for non-parallel lines. If the lines of the graph are parallel, then you have no interaction. But if the lines are non-parallel in any way, then that means there's a change of uh, direction or a change of strength. And that means that there is an interaction. And so we could take a look at several examples here. Uh, are these lines parallel? No. Uh, and so what we have here is an interaction. Are these lines, oh, can you see my little dot? Are these lines parallel? No. So we have an interaction. Are these lines parallel? No. So we have an interaction. Are these lines parallel? No. So we have an interaction. Are these lines parallel? Nope. So we have an interaction. Likewise here, these lines are not parallel. So we have an interaction, interaction, interaction. And we can see that in some cases, uh, the direction is changing. Here we have a change of direction. Uh, that is for the training level as we go from no violence to violence in whatever experiment this is, the DV of memory increases for training, but with no training, uh, the memory scores drop. Hmm. And we see the same thing here, a change in direction. Uh, here we see a change in strength in that as you go from lower par uh, partner uh, attribute to higher partner attribute, uh, we see a slight increase in uh, you know, partner or rela uh, relationship satisfaction when we're dealing with low ideal whatever, uh, probably ideal partners. But when we have high ideal partners, as you go from low to high partner attribute, you see a much stronger increase. What would no interactions look like? Here's what no interactions would look like without an interaction. The lines are perfectly parallel. Parallel, parallel, parallel. Whenever you see lines that are parallel like this, or almost parallel, what you have is no interaction. And uh, so that's it for the uh, video lecture. And so uh, the uh, you know, uh, look on the study guide on Blackboard for the quiz. Uh, there's 21 questions for this quiz. 
a lot are different versions of it. This probably is the most difficult quiz of the three. That is the basic research methods, the psych info quiz. This is the most difficult quiz. So please give yourself time to work through it several times to get to your 80% criteria.